What's up, y'all? We are back today for episode six of Bad Boys Los Angeles. I just realized we are on episode six. We're kind of moving. We're moving towards the end. I would say hopefully it's ten episodes, but if it is ten episodes, we're getting close. But if it's not, then we we halfway there. But yeah, thank y'all again so much, as always, for supporting, liking the videos, dropping comments subscribing continue to do that please continue to do that because you are helping me out a great great deal we just crossed 600 subscribers uh this week so that's a plus we 400 away from my goal which is a thousand we're slowly slowly but surely getting up there but i appreciate y'all so much and thank y'all again i love getting on here and thanking y'all because i wouldn't be doing this and wouldn't be having this much growth if it weren't for y'all so i appreciate each and every one of you that have supported my little channel and supported me getting out here running my mouth and saying what I got to say. But yeah, we're about to get into this. So please, if you haven't already, go ahead, thumbs it up, drop in comments, let me know what you're thinking already. Pop in and say what's up. And subscribe and share. But let's go. to pretty much the end of where we left off last week where they're basically still outside not even in the van yet and carry on and milan are still talking shit da, 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 da. and Darrell money resides and curtis are like the two like the two trying to get them to like resolve the shit shut up like just get in the car and they keep shooting shots at each other keep talking shit throwing low blows and whatnot and Darrell is basically like yeah y'all keep throwing low blows with each other you're not gonna get nowhere like it's like they're they're still not resolving the issue or at least just shutting up and like letting each other just walk off and cool each other down because the more they keep talking the more they ended up irritating each other so i mean it's just still a mess but curtis i mean curtis is being cool too and he's just kind of like trying to talk carry on down kind of trying to get him to kind of just even out just just relax like give it a couple minutes just breathe and i appreciated curtis and uh Darrell in this moment because it's like it's time to get the flip. Like, you too old. Y'all are too old to be sitting here beefing over shit like this. Like, it's too old. You too old to do this. But they ended up finally getting in the van. And uh, when I say they, I mean everybody in the... Pretty much everybody in the house got in the van except for Carry On. Carry On did not feel like getting in that van. He didn't, he didn't like the vibes at all. He didn't feel like he was needed in that van. And I don't blame him because had he gotten in that van, he probably would have fought. Possibly. So, the entire van ride to the fashion show... Milana's in there and he's just dang talking this shit just like unloading all this stuff over and over again and it's funny because everybody was getting irritated they had their little confessionals Gutta, Dylan, uh, Darrell, Anthony they all was just irritated sitting there listening to them talk because you like as we saw last week they all were gradually starting to get annoyed with Milan because Milan is like in a way trying to be the head hunter but still starting out a drama so everybody's getting sick of him at this point so they were tired of that, so as they are pulling up, Milan, I guess he had his chain off or whatnot, and somebody had told him, here's your chain, and he's like, nah, I ain't gonna need it right now. And I don't think anybody picked up on what he was saying by saying that, but basically he's saying, I don't need my chain right now, aka I'm about to get out of this car, and I'm about to run up on him the minute I see him, and that's exactly what he does. He gets out the car and runs up on uh, Carry On, and it looks like he hits a couple of the producers or whoever the fuck the people were. But apparently he didn't, I mean, as we see, Carry On didn't look phased at all. It didn't look like he'd been touched. So, he ran up for no reason. He ran up, like, he ran up for no reason because he wasn't going to get to him. Because there's so many people there anyways. And then you running up, that's some punk shit. Like, you run up on somebody that you, you know they possibly want to smoke with you. And you had every opportunity to fight him in that, uh, in that motherfucking studio. And another thing that I found funny is... He ran up. When I say ran up, he ran. But I thought he had an issue with that leg <laughs> last episode, which is still the same day, the same night, probably 30, 40 minutes before this happened. So what really was down? Like, you really just kind of showed your own hand truthfully because you was inches away from that dude, but you swore up and down that your leg was hurt. But the minute that you get a chance to run up on him and catch him off guard, that's when you then want to start fighting. To me, Milan looked like a pussy in this moment. He kept calling Carry On a pussy, but the one that was looking like a pussy was you. Because you waited to run up on him when he wasn't expecting you, when you had ample opportunity to do that, when he was right there in your face. So Milan, you, you went straight back down the list. I told y'all I was starting to gradually 
I don't say like Milan, but I was not dealing with him when he wasn't getting on my nerves. But yeah, he not irritating me now. But the showrunner is basically outside talking to them, saying that he don't want no fights happening at the party. Or not at the party. He don't want no fights happening at the fashion show because the fashion show is for charity. Apparently, it's for I guess some uh, some younger boys who are trying to play football and don't have the means to do that. So. The fashion show is for charity. They don't want any of that ghetto shit going on at the uh, at the fashion show. So the showrunner, I guess, is friends with Milan too, because he was trying to calm Milan down. And Milan is just going off, talking about where he's from, and you know how people do that. Like whenever they get into fights, or at least attempt to try and fight, or at least to try and make somebody feel like they should be fearing them, they talk about where they're from. I'm from here. I'm from there. You can't play that shit with me because I'm from here. I'm from there. Like. Don't nobody care where you're from. Like, if, you, if you're trying to fight, just fight. Like, don't nobody care. You ain't got to throw up your sets and rep where you're from. Like, just fight. And that's where you know Milan ain't really about what he'd be talking like he about. But Milan gets upset. He's basically saying he feels like he was disrespected by Carry On, which is why he's more and more mad because he continues to gradually get more upset. He's mad because he feels like he just fought him for no, uh, fought them other people for no reason because he was basically trying to fight for Carry On and he feels like Carry On should owe him some type of respect for doing that. Carry On didn't ask you to fight the people that you fought for him. So you can't get mad at him for you doing that and then you irritating him and you sitting there picking with him to the point where he now is sick of you and starts talking shit to you. Like just because you fought for me don't mean that I'm gonna, I'm supposed to be indebted to you every single time you throw shots my way, no. But that's it, he ends up walking away um, walking down the hill and basically everybody else is getting ready to start the fashion show so we're gonna see what's happening. Alright so Milan ends up coming back and he ends up getting in the van and basically that's for him to calm down and get himself together. Everybody else goes inside and uh, they're walking inside and it's just so ghetto done truthfully. <laughs> like the showrunner starts walking and as she, he's walking he's got his microphone and he's interviewing Anthony and Anthony's talking as they're walking, and the microphone's here, and then the interviewer is talking, but the mic's not here. So it's like, why do you have the mic? Like, it's just it's so ghetto. <laughs> it's just so ghetto. It just so it just looks ratchet. Like, but they sit there and have a little interview. I didn't see any other camera besides Zeus recording it. So where is the interview going to be dropped? But they just interviewed him, talking about they're the bad boys in season one, yada yada yada. Just, I guess it's supposed to be like some kind of press junket that's not a press junket for the fashion show. But they finished that. Uh, the showrunner's assistant ended up taking them backstage and basically once they get backstage, that's where they see all of the, the fits they have there. And everybody's looking there and Moolah and Curtis are not feeling what they got in terms of choices for the fits. And they ain't really feeling it. Moolah was basically saying he ain't feeling the whole fashion show because it's, it's ghetto. like. They didn't have nobody there to basically touch them up. Like what he was saying, they ain't have nobody there to touch them up. Nobody there to kind of clean them up. Like when you have a fashion show or whatnot, you got somebody there doing makeup and stuff, even though they men, they're not gonna get makeup on their face and stuff, but they're gonna get like, they're gonna get touched up and stuff. They could be sweating and stuff. So then you get people to kind of like calm that shit down. And then people to line up your shit. Like if you, if you in a fashion show and your hair is nappy and you need your hair done, they gonna line it up. Like, especially when it comes to women and stuff too. Like. Women are get their hair done a certain way. They'll get their makeup done. That's that's what a fashion show entails. At least that's what I would think. If somebody's hiring me to be in a fashion show, that's what I would expect. And somebody to kind of help me. Even though I don't need the help, and you won't need the help putting your clothes on and stuff, but making sure that you look nice wearing the clothes that you're supposed to walk down the aisle with and essentially sell. But there's nobody there. Curtis and Moolah weren't feeling it, and I agree with them because I was like, this is just ghetto. But... <laughs> They ended up doing all that, and then as they're doing this, uh, Carry On's basically telling them like he didn't know that Milan was coming to run up on him, and Darrell and Gutta are basically saying the same thing I literally just said, is that Milan's a punk for that, like it was some coward shit, like you running up on somebody, and they saying like, yeah, this is like the fourth person that he's run up on at this point, and it's just like, every fight that you've been in, you've never given somebody a chance to square up and really do what you gotta do, if you really... Like if you really tough like that, you would you would just basically say like Gutta said, I want you get up, and then when they get up, you just square it off and then throw your shots off. But Milan wasn't doing that, so they didn't respect it, but they respected the Carry On because Carry On looked unfazed. He didn't look like he was bothered at all, and they were giving him his props for that. So then Milan ends up coming in, and he's apologizing to the showrunner and whatnot, claiming that he didn't mean for what happened to happen. We all sat there and watched you premeditate 
you were getting out that van and running up on him. So clearly you didn't mean for that to happen. So whatever. He's just putting on for the uh, show run apparently because that's his friend. But then Gutta and Carry On are having a conversation outside as they're waiting on the show to start. And Gutta's basically just pep talking Carry On, just kind of getting him to kind of come back to down to earth and just realize, hey, you're here for a reason. Just make sure you don't forget who you are in this process. Remember who you are as in Carry On, yada, yada, yada. And he appreciated it, gave him a hug and whatnot. And as they're doing this conversation, the lights go out. Ghetto. <laughs> like, the lights go out. And there's so many people outside, they're just standing around. So they now have issues with the lights and they're trying to figure out what's going on there. So then, everybody then kind of gathers together. And when I'm saying everybody, all the boys, they gather together as they're waiting on the lights to come on. The lights then finally come on, so we're gonna see what's about to happen with the show. But another thing to note, as they're standing here and talking about the lights and the show and whatnot, everything seems like they're going through the script. This is like the first time that I feel like I've really seen a zoo show and felt like they're trying to act out certain lines that might have been fed to them. That is just my opinion. That's just what I felt from that scene where they were just standing there outside the house waiting on the show to start. Like, everybody's like, oh, but this is crazy. Oh my God, yeah, yeah. I was just like, man, come on now. But let's go. All right, so we're gonna quickly run through this one. Uh, so everybody ends up getting out there. They start doing a little fashion show montage. Uh, one notable point, every, just about every single model besides the bad boys and like maybe one or two, and damn near everybody in the audience were blurred out. So I'm like, first of all, why? <laughs> Why are they blurred? And it's like, if they're blurred, it means that they didn't sign a contract or a waiver to even be on the show. So in a way, I'm like, why even do the show? If I mean, we can't see it. Like, the blurred part, that was distracting to me, but whatever. But everybody else, the boys ended up walking down individually. And then this is the thing that, and they kind of got introduced to individually as they were walking. But the thing that I noticed, too, is everybody looked like they didn't know what they were doing, which yeah it made sense because they didn't have a rehearsal or whatnot like typically like with fashion shows and not even just fashion shows any like big event or whatnot you have like a, a dry run like a run through of what the show is going to be and you can tell they didn't have a, a run through of it because they all just walked out there and just went <laughs> and just walked down the aisle and then went and went back and then did it again but it's just like it's just so unorganized that's the one thing i noticed and i'm like okay this is supposed to be and they're branding it like some big time big shit the Hollywood fashion show and it's not that but they all individually ended up walking down uh, the aisle having their little moment they all talking about how they felt how everybody in the crowd reacted to them and for the most part just about everybody had something positive to say so at the end uh, they all get back in the dressing room and everybody's excited except for Moolah because Curtis is asking everybody how y'all feel everybody else is like I feel like I killed it yada 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 Moolah sitting over there kind of like sourpuss looking irritated but the thing that I noticed like he was saying like he didn't like it because they didn't have the clothes that he wanted but whenever he walked down in his confessional he was like talking it up saying like he was a big shot he was doing it and whatnot he felt good yada 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 but as soon as he got back there it's just like completely different <laughs> energy than what he had in that confessional which maybe he was fed a line to be a sourpuss like I said after like certain things starting to be scripted but he was upset and everybody else was like what you mad for? And was, he's like, he's mad because they didn't have the clothes that he liked. And everybody's like, well, didn't you pick the clothes? Like, what clothes did you not see that you might not have liked? Because you picked what you were wearing. And if you didn't like what you were wearing, then that's on you. But maybe he didn't see anything that he liked. And maybe that was the best option for him. But who knows? But we're about to get to the next day. Um, so we'll see what about to, what's about to happen now. Damn, I can't talk. Shit. <laughs> All right, so we get to the next day, and the next day we got Dylan and Gutta downstairs talking, and they basically drinking. It's it's morning time, and they drinking Hennessy. <laughs> and Curtis goes down and is like, "Why y'all drinking right now? It's early in the morning." But he ends up taking a shot with him, so they sitting there just rehashing everything that went down. And just the only thing that's really notable is the fact that Curtis came down there by himself. And Curtis by himself. I mean, Curtis out of everybody on the show. I feel like Curtis means well. I feel like out of everybody, he's the one, truthfully, I can just see him trying to to be like that light within the house, kind of get everybody to, to get along. And Curtis seems like just a cool dude, just like a cool dude, especially by himself, where he don't have any kind of influence. He's just being himself, and that was what he was in that scene. And you can tell Gutta, Gutta was calling him his twin and whatnot, so you can tell Gutta appreciates him as a person, too. 
and Dylan is just Dylan. Like Dylan gonna do what everybody else wants to do. But the next thing we got Moolah and Milan upstairs, and they're basically just doing the same thing everybody else is doing. Which Anthony, Darrell, and Carry On, they were downstairs by the pool. Everybody's just rehashing. As you know, Zeus likes to clip everybody having a scene where they're talking about a certain topic. And that's literally all they did. I don't write. I didn't write anything down. Like, there's nothing to write down. They're just rehashing the fight for the argument that led to a run up slash fight that wasn't really a fight. But long story short, we ended up getting a house meeting. A house meeting is where we end the episode. And it was held by Darrell and Anthony, but Darrell took over. Basically saying like they felt like they saw both sides of the disagreement between uh, Carry On and Milan, which Carry On felt like that was some bullshit because it's like, how do you see both sides? Like, where do you see Milan's side? But as this is going on, Carry On and Milan are sitting there bickering and whatnot. Carry On sitting on the couch with Curtis Mula. Then you got Gutta over here. Then you got Dylan and Anthony and Darrell. And then you got Milan secluded behind like this little bar area. But he's like in a corner. So he's kind of like trying to not be on that rah-rah energy, whereas Carry On is just, you can tell he's antagonizing and wanting him to get up and do something. So Milan's trying to keep it cool, and he's saying in his confessional he don't want to fight him or whatnot because he feel like he don't have too many screws in his head that are actually screwed together, aka he's insinuating that he's a little crazy. And now he doesn't want to fight him. Like, you was wanting to fight him last night, but you don't want to fight him now, which is like, I'm like, Milan, which one is it? Do you want to fight him or do you not want to fight him? But Carry On gets pissed off, runs up, and Curtis and the security tried to stop him. But they didn't really have a good grip on him when he had the opportunity to swing on Milan. So I'm like, why did you not swing on him? Milan is sitting back there, like, doing this and trying to throw his setup like he ain't scared and whatnot. So he comes around the bar, takes off his jacket and whatnot, and is like, come on, get your one on in. Come on. So then they ended up swinging. And none of these niggas on the show can fight. None of them. Like, they they kind of clipped that and stopped it there, so we'll see the rest of it next week. But they showed a little piece of it, too, in the trailer for next week. Both of them can't fight. Carry On got, like, knocked off of his, like, knocked off his balance, too. But you the one that was pressing him, so you let him swing on you first. And then he gets you off balance. Milan didn't land anything. But Carry On was trying to throw stuff too, and he didn't land that neither. So both of them is just really talking shit. And both of them can't really back up what they said they vowed. Like, I have not seen somebody on this fight, that can, or on this show, that can really fight. I have not seen it yet. But we might be getting ready to see it soon, because the fan favorite that has not even been on the show yet, that every fan talks about, even y'all talked about it, Jonathan is coming. And I'm excited, because he looks like he is going to bring it. And apparently, he can fight. And Milan apparently had some type of beef with him prior to the show. So this is going to get interesting because I'm excited to see somebody kind of counteract to Milan's head honcho-ness in the house. And Jonathan looks like he big. Like, he a big dude. Like, <laughs> Jonathan looks like he can throw down. So I'm excited to see him. And hopefully, hopefully he turns it up because this show's starting to get a little boring to me. But I'm expecting Jonathan to do something good because y'all y'all hype him up. And from what I saw and remembering that the super trailer, I saw him. I saw him in a couple fights, actually. But also, Milan was talking to some dude on the phone too. I guess it's gonna be a bad boy too, and told him to come because he feels like he's about to get ambushed by Jonathan. Which I'm like, you need your boy to come to fight one on one with somebody. Milan is starting to show that he ain't really about what he really about. Cause like, if you gotta call back up to fight one person, then you a punk. But. That's all I got to say about this episode. Let me know what y'all think. Drop those comments down below. Thumbs up the video if you have not already. Subscribe if you have not already. Share the video if you like <laughs> what I got going on. Please do that. Um, but yeah, and you can follow me on my socials too. That's right down her. Um, but yeah, I'll see y'all next week. And thank you again for rocking with me as always. Peace.